My name is Grania. I'm a compulsive eater. I weigh and measure three meals a day from the gray sheet. I turn them over to a qualified gray sheet food sponsor. I eat exactly what I've committed according to gray sheet parameters, uh, no matter what. And my abstinence is the most important thing in my life. My abstinence date is September 16th, 1994. Thank you, Laura, for inviting me. Thank you, everybody doing service. And thank you for being here. All these, like this group has been going for maybe 10 years now. And so, you know, every Thursday, there's a bunch of gray sheeters who get together to support each other's abstinence, stay abstinent and carry the message. And the number of people counting days here is just so inspiring, like to know that all these people are starting their journey or restarting their journey. I had two day ones after I got here, so I definitely appreciate the restarts. Um, so, um, I am an example of why this program shouldn't work. Uh, this program is completely ludicrous from my perspective. It makes no sense whatsoever and uh, doesn't match my needs in the least bit. So starting with the fact that it's a 12 step program and it's based on um, finding a power greater than yourself, which the literature often refers to as God. And being an atheist, I know there is no God. I'm not an agnostic, I'm not in any doubt about it. There's no God. There, so that was my first like, well, obviously this program isn't gonna work for me. And then the second one is I'm vegan and I need to eat no animal products. Therefore I must eat carbohydrates, grains, complex carbohydrates. So I can't possibly eliminate grains and um, high starch vegetables. But you know, those two things aren't even the biggest barrier to me getting abstinent. The biggest barrier is probably, and this is related to the first one, that I absolutely believe in the power of figuring things out. And you need to be able to figure it out, research it, um, make it make sense, come up with a plan and exert your willpower and follow that plan. Everything in my upbringing tells me that's how the world works. You know, this, I grew up in Ireland. I was born in 63. Every message that I got in the Western world was, you're on your own. You got to figure it out, make it happen. It's up to you. Use your brain, use your willpower, use the power of your personality, do whatever it takes, but it's up to you. You got to figure it out. And this program says, you can't figure it out. There is no figuring it out. Just surrender to something that makes no sense whatsoever. Just do it anyway. So there's no reason why I'm here all these years later, except complete and utter desperation. I spent 30 years trying to figure it out. I spent 30 years exerting my willpower, doing the research, applying my intelligence. And, you know, the willpower probably kept me from exceeding 200 pounds because I was constantly, constantly fighting the urge to eat. Like there wasn't a waking moment that I can remember not even when I was three or four years old, when I wasn't fighting the urge for more. And I fought the good fight. So maybe I didn't make it to 200 pounds, but it made life really miserable because I always eventually ate. And, um, but I did that for 30 years and I don't, I don't have a high tolerance for pain. I don't have a high tolerance for suffering. That was it. I was done. I was ready to jump off a bridge. I I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was going to be 60 or 70 more years of exactly the same thing. I was convinced. 
that I was just going to spend the rest of my life on this planet in that constant battle, self-loathing, failure, and I was going to get bigger and bigger. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And I was getting bigger and bigger. And I'll just show you this picture, this kind of, um, this picture of me kind of illustrates the misery of my disease. Let's see here. Can you see the picture of me with curly dark hair? Can somebody give me a signal that you can see it? Yep, Layla, thank you. So this is me at my highest weight, 185 pounds. That was the last time that I weighed myself. Once that scale hit 185, I never wanted to look at it again. Um, this is the only picture that was taken from 1984 to maybe 97. I didn't let anybody take my photograph. This photograph was taken by my boss at my new job. And I couldn't say no, but everything about me radiated fuck off with your damn camera. <laughs> Don't come in here and mess with me because I wouldn't even make, make eye contact. They were trying to take photographs for brochures and I wouldn't even make eye contact because I was so angry. And that was what I was too. Like before I got abstinent, I was furious. I walked around hating the world and everything in it. Everything in it because I hated myself and I only learned this later, but I was furious, furious. And I, if I had a car, I would have succumbed to road rage. You know, if I had a gun, I probably would be in jail for murder. I was dangerous. I was nasty. I was mean. I was also a coward. So I was mean surreptitiously. I was very passive aggressive. I didn't yell at people, but I gossiped about people. I didn't tell you no, but I didn't do what you told me to do at work. You know, I was just oppositional. I got a two-year-old stomping her feet. So um, by the age of 30, I was done. And um, I heard about OA. So I went to two years, went to OA meetings for two years. Could not figure out what they were talking about, how to get. It only made it worse, the suffering I felt like I was circling the drain faster because I was fighting it harder, trying to do whatever it was they were doing, but I couldn't figure it out and it didn't work. And um, and then this gray sheeter showed up in my OA meeting. And, you know, the story of Gray Sheeters Anonymous, we celebrate it today, 25 years as a fellowship today, but the story of how this, you know, spreads is one person leaving New York and moving to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and being told by her sponsor, you go to an OA meeting, you say your mantra. That's you letting people know in Kalamazoo, Michigan, that Gray Sheet is here, but that's it. You don't go back to those meetings. So she came to that one OA meeting when I was at my most desperate. She said her mantra, and I knew that was it. I found the solution. I didn't know what the hell I was getting myself into. Of course, when she showed me that gray sheet, and I've anybody who's heard my story before knows that I had, I absolutely had a little red devil over here and a little white angel over here. And the devil was saying, but tell her you have to have grains. And the little white angel was saying, just shut up and do what she tells you. But tell her you have to have grains. Just shut up and do what she tells you. But you're a vegan. You need to have grains. And I managed to keep my mouth shut and commit my first three meals. And I felt like I'd lost 50 pounds just by committing those three meals. I felt like I had been, I was Atlas and the world had been taken off my shoulders. I felt like I could stand up for the first time. And I felt like I floated out of that meeting room, up the stairs and out of that meeting room, because 
now I know I was not alone in the solution. There was a solution and I didn't have to figure it out. I didn't have to have the answers. I just had to do what she did. And I knew, thank you, Nancy. I knew that it worked because she had three years and I had never met anybody with three years of abstinence at that point. Three years of weighing and measuring without exception. So um, I, I came into these rooms and only because, well, only when I got abstinent did I start looking for a higher power for, you know, really concentrating on, okay, I know I'm not uh, a God believer, so what's my higher power going to be? Well, clearly my higher power is this program that if you had put a gun to my head and said, come up with a solution for compulsive eating, never in a million years would I have I designed this program. Meetings and phone calls and a sponsor and service and prayer and meditation and this food plan that eliminates the foods that the entire world believes you think that you need to eat in order to be healthy. I mean, who are these people who put this down on paper and told us we needed to do it like this? A power greater than me, absolutely. And the, the fact of the fellowship that we do this all together, that is a power greater than me. And I tell newcomers all the time when they tell me, um, but I can't. I, they ask me about GSA because I'm I'm the person at the end of the the GSA phone number, and so I get calls from newcomers and I tell them about the program and they say I don't think I can do it, and I always say you can't, we can, join us, together we can, you cannot. So I know that even after doing this without exception for the last whatever 28 plus years. If I walk away from you, within a few months, I will be face back, flat in the food again. It may not even take a few months. Probably actually wouldn't take, now that I think about it, because I haven't really thought about it, it probably wouldn't take more than a couple of weeks because I would make this change and that change and then the other change and they'd all be rational and they'd all be completely set, common sense. And then I'd think, well, what the hell am I doing? Like I'm doing, I can make my own decisions. Then I'll just decide to eat whatever. So I'm going to close um, on this. I was thinking about it as I was running errands today that seemed just overwhelming. My house is infested with fleas. So the exterminator had to come and I had to leave the house for two hours. And somehow while leaving the house for two hours, I had to do all these other things that had to get done that needed things in the house, but it was all very complicated. And I thought my head was going to explode. And I thought life is really hard. And when I was in the food, like here's everybody else functioning along, dealing with errands and exterminators and fleas and family and friends and careers and world peace and inventing the PC and all the things that people do. And I'm down here fighting the food and I'm fighting the food and 99% of me is caught up with fighting the food. I could barely function. Like I barely passed as normal before I got here. And now I have a chance to be normal. And I just wonder how many PCs and world peace I might've invented if I hadn't been in fighting the food for 30 years. Like I was operating at a decrement and all that abstinence guarantees me today is I get to function like everybody else. I get to tackle the world, thank you, Nancy, like everybody else. I don't have the self-loathing. I don't have the self-hatred. I don't hate you. Um, I'm not wrapped up in myself all the time. I know that things are possible because I see you do it every day and tell me about it when I talk to you on the phone and when I see you in meetings. And I haven't had a craving since 1993. And I haven't had an obsessive thought about food since 1994. My brain is my own. My brain gets to face life on life's terms. It's not occupied with 
Can I get that bite? Not get that bite? Should I get that bite? Oh God, I ate, I ate it. Now what am I going to do? How many calories was that? How many times do I have to run around the block to get rid of that? Do they see me? Do they hate me? Yes, they hate me. Well, I hate them too. You know, that is what my head was like before. And that's all gone. So I can't tell you that abstinence, thank you, Nancy, will get bring you, um, what do they say in AA? Gifts and prizes. There are no gifts and prizes. I just get to be normal, a person amongst her people. And I'm very grateful. Thanks.